What's going on everyone? My name is Tyler and welcome to my channel. Today we're beginning a brand new series where we're going to be writing a Pratt parser using the Go programming language. It's been long requested and long awaited that I continue my interpreter series, but I figured I would actually focus on writing parsers. So in this series, we're going to be writing a parser for a syntax like the one you see right here. The syntax is pretty modern. It includes object oriented principles, classes, um, static types, implicit and explicit types, meaning there will be type inference. It'll include array and string literals, as well as common control flow patterns like if, um, for each, and switch statements, and it'll include imports. All of these combines will give you an idea of how to parse basically any syntax that you want to come across or that you want to create. Um, to get started with parsing, the first two episodes of the series, we're going to be working on tokenization. Tokenization is the process where we take the source code and translate it into tokens. So, for example, let nums would produce a tokens of a let token and a symbol token where the value is nums. And you can see how this would continue on um, for an entire source code. So the goal of tokenization is to split up the source code into um, meaningful tokens that we can understand and then use with parsing into the AST. And AST stands for Abstract Syntax Tree. It is a tree data structure, which we're going to be using to represent our program. So ASTs are incredibly powerful tools, and that's what we're going to be focusing on with this series, is how do we create an AST? The process of creating an AST is pretty simple in general. We build the Lexer, which again, we're going to be focusing on the rest of this video and the next video. Overall, it should take about 40 minutes um, of the video time to create a Lexer. And then the rest of the series will actually be focused on parsing. Once we have this parser, we can then do a lot of things with it, such as code generation, interpretation, type checking, and a whole bunch of other stuff. This series is only covering building the parser, but um, the next series is going to be on interpretation or compilation. I'm going to kind of see what people want in the comments and on the Discord server, and I'm going to go down whatever route is most popular. So even though we're not going to be building a functional language where you can actually run the code, this will be a building block because to run any code, you first actually have to build an AST. To build an interpreter, you have to build an AST. To build a compiler, you have to build an AST. So this language series is incredibly important to get into language development. Um, the objectives, again, for the series are building a tokenizer using popular um, constructs such as regular expressions. We're going to be building a prep parser using the prep parsing technique. Um, and you'll be able to apply all of these skills that you learn in the series to write a parser for any language. So you'll be able to modify this parser and have the skills needed to build a parser for any language and any syntax. So without further ado, we're actually going to get started right now constructing our Lexer, which we'll be using for the rest of the series. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually get started by writing the source code for our Lexer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the terminal and I am going to create two folders. So we're going to do make dir and we're going to create source and examples like so. And then inside of source, we're going to create a file called main.go. We're also going to make a directory of source slash lexer. And for now, that will be it for our source. Um, I also want to create a file inside of examples um, for our source code that we're going to be testing. So I'm going to go here and touch uh, examples slash 00.lang. And this is simply just going to be the code we're going to be parsing uh, throughout the series. And 00 is obviously going to be for this episode, 01 for the next episode, etc. So for this series, um, we're going to start in two stages by working on the Lexer. So without further ado, let's actually start by creating something I want to be able to Lex by the end of this. So let's say um, an expression like this, we should have a 10 token, a star token, a two token, as well as a semicolon token. Um, if I add a minus, these should also be two separate tokens. So we're going to start really simple with something like this. And then we're going to add plus parenthesis 2.4 minus negative 2. 
right? Something like this is something we expect to be able to lex by the end of this episode. So let's go into the main.go and let's give it a package of main and actually go ahead and um, print out this code. So we're gonna give it a package of main, a func main. And then what I wanna do is I actually want to read this file. So I'm just gonna call it bytes uh, and error. And we're just gonna do os.read file. And the path to this file is in terms of the directory we run it in. So I'm just gonna do dot slash examples slash zero zero dot lang. And then we're just gonna do source is a string representation of bytes. And then let's just say I wanna print this off real quick just to make sure everything's working. So I'm just gonna do an fmt dot print f. We're just gonna print the code like so, like so. And then now I should be able to do go run uh, source main.go. And there we go. We can see the code. Perfect. So, uh, what I want to do now is I want to go into the lexer and I want to create a file called tokens.go. This is going to be a part of the package lexer. And we're going to actually start defining um, what our uh, tokenizer really is. So um, let's actually get started with this and define what a token is. So um, to define what a token is, it's uh, really quite simple. So we're just going to define a type of token. And this is going to be a structure. And it's going to have a uh, value, which is a string. So this is the actual value of the token. So for example, a token of plus would have a value of the underlying um, plus token, right? And then it also has a token kind, which is simply, uh, sorry, that's not the type, uh, value. It is kind of token kinds. And a token kind for us is just basically going to be an enum. So we're going to define uh, token kinds to be an int to keep it nice and simple. And then we're going to do const uh, open parenthesis, and we're going to define the different token types um, like this. So uh, we're going to start with the EOF. Um, which is a token kind, and this is going to be iota, which just allows this to keep counting upwards from here. So this will start at zero. If I define something like foo, um, you can see foo is one, etc. It's basically just doing what an enum does in most languages. So um, let's define all of the token kinds. For example, there's number, there's string, uh, not like that. There's identifiers. Um, we also have things like grouping tokens. So an open bracket, a close, close bracket, open uh, curly, close curly, open paren, close paren. Uh, we'll then have things like equivalency tokens, like assignment. Uh, equals uh, not, not, equals, etc. Um, we will then have, so for example, an assignment token is just an equal sign, right? A um, equals token is two, not is obviously uh, like this. You, you get the idea. Um, so that's basically all we're doing right now is we're just defining all of the tokens we're going to be dealing with. Um, we have less, uh, less, less equals, greater, greater equals, or, and, um, dots, dots, dots. So our language will support the dot dot ellipses operator. So something like zero dot dot 10 um, will be a syntax. So dot dot is the ellipses operator for us. Um, we'll also obviously have things like semicolons, uh, colon, uh, question. Uh, we'll have things like commas, um, plus, plus, uh, which means we'll also have a minus minus. Um, we'll have plus equals, 
minus equals. Um, and you would obviously want to add in here things like um, slash equals and star equals. I'm not going to be adding these in the parser or lexer, but because they're literally identical to these, how they're handled, so I won't be adding these, but I just want to demonstrate that you will want to add those. Um, yeah, perfect. So let's also continue on and add the uh, mathematical operators. So that's something like plus. Um, we will have, uh, what will we have? Uh, uh, dash. We'll have slash, which is for division. We will have star and percent for modulus. And there we go. So these are all of the operators of our language, including identifier strings and numbers, as well as um, symbols and grouping expressions. And then now we'll actually define the reserved keywords. So things like let, const, um, things like class, new, uh, imports, um, from, uh, fn, if, else, uh, for each, uh, we'll support while loops, uh, for loops as well. Uh, we have exports, type of, and in as well, uh, like so. So there we go. Um, so these are all the reserved keywords. So this is all of the token kinds. So there are a total of uh, 50 um, different tokens. So yeah, exactly. If you just create all the different token kinds, this is what makes up a token. We have a kind and a value. So now that we've defined what a token is, let's actually um, continue and define... Um, a helper method so we can debug these tokens. So first things first, um, we're going to need to have a function, which is basically a method. It's going to be token, token. So this is going to be called debug, and it is going to return a string. Uh, actually, we won't have it return a string. Sorry about that. So what we're going to do is we are going to check if the token dot uh, dot kind is an identifier or the token dot kind is a number or the token dot kind is a string. If it is, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a print F and what we're going to print is percent S and then space percent S like so. And then a backslash N. And the format we're going to do is we're going to create a method to actually print the token kind, which is going to be token kind string. And it's just going to take in token dot kind, like so. Um, and then actually the token dot value will be the last thing. So there we go. Um, that is the case if it is an identifier, a number, or string. Uh, if it's not, then it's even easier because all we need to do is do an fmt.printf and we just do percent %s open paren close paren backslash n and these tokens uh, also we're going to use the token kind string method that we haven't created but we will uh, and we're just going to pass in the kind so there we go that's basically all the debug function does um, and let's now go ahead and actually create this token kind string method uh, that you see right here. So we're just going to do func uh, token kind string. And it's going to take in a kind, which is a token kind. And it returns a string, right? So there we go. Um, now the compiler's happy. So let's actually go ahead and define uh, this function. And I will go ahead and copy this from another monitor. Uh, because I do not want to be typing this all day long. But um, as you can see, uh, we are just defining... Oh, did I miss semicolon? Wait. Oh, semicolon, semicolon. I did. There we go. 
There we go. Right. So um, basically, I am just doing a giant switch case over all of the different tokens which we support. So EOF, right? We go to where EOF is, number string identifier, and we go to a number string identifier. And basically, it just returns the string representation of the enum itself. Since Go does not have enums, um, we can't just print off the text number. We have to actually do this ourselves. So this is just a simple helper method. It takes in the token kind, which if we remember is an int, um, and it returns a string of what that int represents. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this, um, but it's basically just a ginormous switch case. Uh, next, I wanna create a function, uh, let's create it above, called new token. And it's gonna take in a kind of token kind and a value of uh, string. And it's just going to return a token like so. So we're just going to do return a token and we're just going to do kind comma value like so. And this is just going to be used to actually create a token, right? Um, so now that we have this, uh, let's also go ahead and create um, one more method, which I want to use because it will uh, simplify our code here as well as a whole bunch in the parser. So what I want to do is notice how we have to do this check if the kind is an identifier or token kind is a number or token kind is this. Really ideally we'd like to have a function which is just a part of token where we can just really quickly have this written. So I'm going to go ahead and define a function for this and this is going to be token and it is of type token right? and we're just going to call it is one of many and it's going to take an expected uh, token which is dot 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 uh, token kind and it's just going to return a bool so this is a variadic function it takes in um, a whole bunch of different tokens and if the token kind of this token is any of them it will return true so we're just going to do four. Um, we don't actually care uh, about the index. So we're going to do index, comma, expected. And then we're going to do a range of expected tokens. So we're going to iterate over each token kind. And we're just going to check if the expected is equal to dot kind. If it is, then we just return true. All right. Um, and by the end of the loop, we just return false if we don't have it. Now, this function may not seem like it's very useful, but even in a simple situation like this, we can simplify this if statement to just be if um, token uh, token dot is one of many and pass an identifier, comma, number, comma, string. And that handles all of this. So it just simplifies our code just a little bit. And there we go. So now we have a nice, clean, elegant way um, to actually handle multiple checks on a token. So that's all I really wanted to do for that. Um, so now we've actually gone ahead and created every single thing we need for this episode. Um, so let's actually go ahead now and go to the tokenizer.go where we'll actually start writing the tokenizer. So now we have these token structs. Um, and some methods to print them, create them, debug them. And let's actually now go ahead and create the uh, tokenizer or lexer.go. And this is a part of the package of lexer. So uh, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to do two different types of imports. So we're going to be importing FMT because we use that a lot. And we're going to be using the regexp uh, library, which is built into Go. So let's actually go ahead and create a type of lexer. And this is a structure like so. And what we want to do is define a few fields here. So we're going to do a tokens, which is of type uh, token slice. We're going to define the source code as a private member. And this is a string. We're going to define the position, which is an integer like so. And for some reason, it's not formatting my code. There we go. Um, and there is also one other type, which is the patterns, which is a array of regex patterns. 
Now, what is a regex pattern? Well, a regex pattern, and this should be a N regex pattern, is a structure which contains um, two fields. It contains a regex, which is going to be a pointer to a regular expression dot regular expression. So this is going to be the actual regular expression which matches a certain type of token and the handler, which is going to be a regex, uh, regex handler. Now, what is a regular expression handler? Uh, don't worry, these are the most complicated parts of this entire project. Once you to see what a regular expression handler is and how we use it, hopefully in a couple minutes, um, this will become a lot more clear. But for now, uh, you're gonna kind of have to hang in there. So a type of a regular expression handler is a function which takes in the lexer, and we're just gonna call it lex, which is a pointer to the lexer. So it's a mutable reference, because it's a pointer to the lexer, and it takes in a regular expression, um, which is going to be a regular expression dot regex, like so. And it doesn't need to return anything, it's basically gonna be for every regular expression, we'll have a handler that handles that particular regular expression and we'll add that token to the lexer. So let's actually see how this is defined because I'm sure it is a bit confusing. So um, let's go ahead and actually define the tokenize uh, method. Um, yeah, let's get started with that. And so we're gonna have a function. Uh, there we go, a function called tokenize. It's gonna take in some source code, which is of course a string, and it's gonna return an array or slice of tokens. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna create the actual lexer instance. So I'm gonna create a function called create lexer and pass in the source code like so. And at the very end, uh, for now, we're just gonna do return lex dot uh, tokens like so. Now let's go ahead and create this function called create lexer. And let's see how we actually define this. So uh, create lexer is a function which takes in some source code, which is of course a string, and it returns a pointer to a lexer like so. Now what this function does is it simply returns the pointer, so a reference to a lexer object like so, and we define the position to be zero, uh, we define the source to be, well, the source. Ah. Um, we then define the tokens to be a empty slice by default. Um, and then the patterns is an interesting one because this is um, a little bit more complicated. So for now, um, what you can see is this create lexer just simply instantiates the lexer. And in here, we will define all of our patterns, like so. So um, I'll show you how that works in a second. I'm trying to get through this, but there's a lot of complexity that kind of goes on with this. But once you see it, I think it'll be a lot more clear. So let's first define the pattern for something super simple, like an open and a close bracket, just so we can see how we're going to be dealing with this. So. Let's define a pattern for a reg, an open and a close bracket. So um, we want to be able to parse something like this and something like this. So let's define a new entry. So we're going to have a comma here. And a pattern, if we recall from the regex pattern, has a regular expression and a handler in that order. So the regular expression, we're going to use the regex dot must compile, and it takes in a regular expression string and it will compile it. We know all these are valid regular expressions at runtime or at compile time, so this is fine. And the regular expression we're gonna use is backslash open bracket, like so. So this um, right here is a regular expression to parse the open bracket, right? Next, we're gonna define a default D-E-F-A-U-L-T handler which is going to take in the open bracket, okay? And it is going to take in the open bracket value, like so. Now, the only other thing we have to do is define this default handler, 
So let's just define that. And uh, to define the default handler, uh, what we're going to be doing is we are going to have it take in the token kind. So this is the uh, kind, which is, of course, type uh, token kind. Um, and it's going to take in the value, which is a string. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a regex handler, which if we remember, is what regex patterns are. It takes in a regex and a handler. So the default handler is basically for all the tokens which we know how to parse immediately at, run at when we see them, right? There's no ambiguity with how to parse this. If you see this, you know it's an open bracket with a open run, like so. So um, all we do really is we just return an anonymous function which I'm just going to have it auto-complete it, right? It takes in the lexer and the regular expression. And then what we're going to do is we need to advance uh, the lexer's position past the value we just reached. So I'm going to define a, a method like lex.advance n. And n, let's just say, is the length of value, right? And this method will define in a second. And then we also need to do some sort of like lex.push, which is just going to call um, new token. And it's going to take in a kind of kind and a value of value, right? So let's define these two methods, uh, push and advance end. And you'll see these are both incredibly simple methods for the lexer. So we're going to do func um, lex, and this is a lexer. And these are all going to be mutable. We're just going to do the advance n method. And it's going to take in an int n, which is an integer. And it's basically just going to do um, what it sounds like. It's going to advance the position just pass n bytes. So we're going to do lex.position plus equals n. And that's all this method does. Let's also define the other method, which was push, which, if we recall, takes in a token to push, like so. Um, and this method is going to take in a, poke, uh, take in a token and do lex, uh, and we're just going to do append lex.tokens, comma, token. Um, and then we need to do lex.tokens equals append, like so. So we're just appending this token onto the slice, and it returns a new slice, which we're assigning to lex.tokens, like so. Um, let's also quickly define a few more helpful methods, like at, which is a function, which again works on a lexer pointer. And this is simply going to return um, the byte at which we're at. So I'm just going to have it um, take in nothing. It returns a byte. And that's going to be return uh, lex. Uh, what would it be? It would be lex.source of lex.position, like so. And this just returns the, uh, the token we're currently at. And I'm going to copy it. And we're going to define another method and another method. This one is going to be called remainder, which is going to return a string. And remainder is going to return the remainder of the string from the position. So we're just going to do lex.source from uh, lex.position to the ends, like so. So this is just going to get from the, the source, from the position index on to the end. Um, at, we're going to create one more method called at EOF, which is going to return a Boolean. And this is going to return whether lex.position is greater than or equal to the length of the source, like so. Now, with all of these methods, um, we can actually now completely build the rest of the parser. So, um, we have this patterns array, which defines one pattern currently, the pattern for open brackets. And you can see we call default handler, which literally just returns a function that parses this specific token, right? So it's it's pretty simple with that regard. 
what we're going to do is we've defined the lexer in our uh, create lexer method. So what we're going to do is we are now going to do, uh, we're going to iterate while the lex is not at the end of file, right? So while we still have tokens left with us, um, so iterate while we still have tokens. While we still have tokens, what we want to do is we want to define a variable called matched, which is just going to be false by default. And we're going to do for, and we're going to iterate over every pattern. And we're just going to iterate over every single pattern. Now, why are we doing this? Basically, what we want to do is at our current position, right? So let's imagine we have a string like 10 plus 5. What we're going to be doing is we're going to start at the current token, right? Our position is going to start at 0, and we're going to start here. What we're going to then do is we're going to apply every regex in the patterns array. First, we're going to try, say, the open bracket. It's not going to succeed all the way to the end. So then we're going to keep iterating until we don't find a match or we find a match, and then we call the handler method for that match. So let's actually see how that works. So let's get the location of the match, and we're going to do uh, pattern dots, and we're going to do regex dot uh, find, uh, where is it, string uh, index. And we're going to pass in the lex.remainder, like so. So this is going to attempt to parse every single bit of the string until it finds a uh, match. And then we're going to return the location of the first match. So if, um, if uh, the location is not nil, that means it's found, right? And the location's first match is equal to zero. So this location at index zero returns the index of the first match. It has to be zero because that would mean it found it right at our position. If say we're trying to parse 10, right? And the first thing is, let's say there's an open bracket here for some reason, right? Like it's an array or literal or something. Well, the open bracket will match 100%. Right, so it's going to iterate through the patterns array, and if we look at lex dot patterns, um, the first pattern is a open bracket. So it's going to match the first thing in here is an open bracket. It's going to match an open bracket at zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it exists. This will pass, but this won't. Meaning we actually need to find something to pass for this. So that's why we're doing this check right here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do pattern dot handler and we're just going to pass in the lex and the um pattern dot regular expression which we just tried we're going to set the matched to uh, true and we're going to break from this loop uh right here because we've already found the match and then the pattern dot handler is going to build the token that it just matched for and push it into the lexer right so at the end of the for loop, we need to check if we did not match, right? So if we didn't match, we should panic. And I'm going to do an fmt.s print f, which is going to be a print of a format string. And we're going to do uh, lexer uh, error. And I'm going to just say something like unrecognized unrecognized token near, and then I'm just going to print out um, the uh, remainder of lex.remainder, like so. So this is just going to be a really basic error message. You should obviously pr uh, could extend this. Uh, like so. So you can, for example, print the location this occurred um, and give a better error handling description so that way the user actually knows what's going on. Um, but for us, we're just going to do very basic error handling because the point of the series is not how to handle certain errors, it's how to parse and lex in this case. So this is the entirety of our tokenized method, except, yes, we're missing one last thing. Um, we just need to do lex.push. In the token we're going to do is we're going to do a new token 
where the token kind is EOF and the value is EOF because this means we have reached the end of file, right? While we're not at the EOF, we keep running this through. So we always add a token called the end of file just so that way the parser knows when we're actually at the end of the input. So say there's 100 tokens in the input, there'll be 101 tokens that the lecture will produce always. Um, so this is the entirety of the tokenizer. Now, um, what you'll notice is this won't work um, for anything other than syntax, which just has brackets, because right, we haven't defined all of our, um, where is it, sorry, right here. We haven't defined all of the other rules. So for example, that is how you do an open bracket. Here's how you would do a close bracket. Again, it is identical, uh, close bracket, right? And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and define all of our um, handlers. So I am gonna be lazy and copy every single handler, but you can pause the video and type these out if you want. Again, I am just defining all of the handlers for every simple token that we have in our language. Open bracket, close bracket, curly, parentheses, equals, right? Two equals, not equals, etc. Now, one thing I do want you to note, and this is actually really important, um, with this type of parsing strategy, the order of which we define the patterns is important. So what I mean by that is something like equal equals has to come before the simple equals right here. If I switch the order of this, it would create two assignment tokens instead of one equals token. So the order is important here. But if you just look at this right here, um, this is all of the patterns we're going to be defining today. And in the next episode, we'll actually be defining five more, which will completely finish out all of our lexing. So um, our goal today, right, is to be able to handle numbers and all of these. So the only thing we don't handle right now is numbers. So let me go ahead and define the number handler, right? So I'm going to go ahead again, and I'm going to copy the regular expression for numbers like so. And again, numbers are defined like so. So we have zero through nine, including but not limited to where we have a single decimal somewhere throughout. So this is how we'll handle numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and define this number handler function uh, down here. So let's actually see how do we handle numbers, right? And you'll see it's very simple. Number handler is a function which takes in the instance of the lexer, a mutable instance, mind you, and it takes in the regex, uh, regex dot regular expression, and it does not return anything. Ah, there we go. Right. And what we do in here is we can all agree that by the time you hit the handler, right, we know for a fact the location is already zeroed out with our position, and we know for a fact it exists. That means when we call into handler, right, we're passing in the pointer to the lexer and the regular expression that just matched already, we can make some assumptions about the quality of this handler. We don't have to do as much error checking in these handlers because we know it's always valid. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, let's get out the match that we just reached, right? So to do this, we're going to do regex, ah, regex, regex dots. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a method called find string. Um, and I think it's just find string, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay, it takes in the string. And it uh, matches it. So we're just going to do lex.remainder, like so. This is the actual string that was matched for our, num our number. So this is the pattern that matched that. What we're going to do is then I'm going to do a lex.push. And we're going to push the new token of number, comma, match, like so. Then we're going to advance n the length of match. And this is how we handle numbers. It is very elegant, very clean, using regular expressions. So uh, let's now try to go ahead and actually run this code and see if it works. So without further ado, let's go into the main.go. We already have the source code right here, so I'm going to just get rid of this. And we're going to do tokens, ah, tokens, and that is toke, uh, toke, uh, lexer, 
Yeah, I should probably... For some reason, it's not finding it. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, one second. We will need to bring in the Lexer, which is for some reason not auto-completing for. So let's just see what's going on here. So let's just import the Lexer package. To do that, we're going to do github.com slash tlacebe slash um, parser Lexer, right? And okay. And then we're going to do, there we go. It found it. Lexer.tokenize. And we're going to pass in the source code like so. And hopefully it finds it. T lace B parser dash series slash Lexer. And tokenize should be a public method. One second. It is. It's beautiful. And let's see if it can find it. Uh, why did it not find it? Let's go to the go dot. Oh, I see why it didn't find it because I never defined this package right here. So I need to do go um, mod init github.com slash tlacebe slash a parser parser series like so. And now if we look at this, it should go get it and it'll literally just find it right there. So let me just retype this. Uh, we should be able to just do Lexer. And there it is. Lexer dot um, tokenize. Like so. We pass in the source code. And I'll just actually simplify this by doing string of bytes. Like so. And there we go. Now we have all the tokens for our language. So what we're going to do is we're just going to for loop. We're going to iterate over every token. And here we have a token, so I'm just going to call token dot uh, debug, like so. And let's just see if this works. So hopefully it does, uh, since I haven't had ability to test this. Let's do go run. I mean, not go. And okay, so we actually do get an error here. And we see unrecognized token star. Uh, oh, I actually see the issue. It's actually because of space. If you look here, we see there's two spaces. It's because we don't have a token which handles white space, right? So that is something we need to handle. So let's go into the Lexer and define another regular expression specifically um, for white spaces. So this token is going to be for uh, skips. So we're going to just copy this right here. And I'm going to define the regular expression uh, for backslash um, s plus. And this is the skip handler, like so. So let's define this function down below. I'm literally going to copy this uh, right here. And we're going to define one called skip handler, like so. And inside of the skip handler, basically all we need to do is just find out how big it was uh, how big the thing is that we just had, right? So we're going to do match regex dot find string index, and it's going to give us the remainder like so. And then this, what we're going to do is we're just going to do lex dot advance n, and we're going to do match at the first index. Now this is going to return us the length of the first match right here. And now if we run this, it works. So we actually take a look at what's happening here and we see we have a number token. So if we look here, we see number, the space was ignored and we get star dash two plus open paren 2.4 dash dash um, number and then close paren semicolon EOF. So uh, that is basically Lexing in a nutshell. Next series, or next episode, we're going to finish off the Lexer with a few tiny adjustments, and then we'll be completely ready to go for parsing, which is going to be really exciting. Lexing is really the boring part of this whole thing. Parsing is where it gets really exciting, and we can actually use these tokens to construct a really meaningful product, which is our AST. 
So I will see you in the next episode. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on my Discord server, which will be linked in the description down below. And in the meantime, uh, peace, have a good time, and happy coding.